Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about the Tuskegee experiment, aka study, which took place for 40 years. Now between 1932 and 1972, the United States Public Health Service or the USPHS, they conducted an unethical study on over 600 African American men. Now, what they did and got away with is still unbelievable to this day. And this mistreatment is what pretty much set the tone for the distrust African-Americans have when it comes to the medical establishments in today's society. So, with that being said, let's chat. Now, before we discuss the Tuskegee experiment, we must first discuss African-Americans and the medical society all together. Now, although slavery formally ended in 1865 after the ratification of the 13th Amendment, not much changed when it came to medical and scientific racism in regards to the African-American community. And this was primarily due to the racist concepts in which the medical landscape of the United States was built upon. Now, social Darwinism, it was also on the rise. Um, so scientific racism, it was pretty much becoming quite common and a known thing at this time. I mean, before we move on, I do want to break a few things down. Now, some of you all were probably like social Darwinism, like what the heck is that? Well, you may be familiar with it if I said survival of the fittest. Uh-huh. You're familiar with that one, aren't you? Now, social Darwinism, it is pretty much a loose set of theories or ideas that came out in the late 1800s. Now, in the late 1800s, Charles Darwin, he threw out a theory that some people are just better than other people. And this is why they became powerful in society. Now, Darwin's theory, it was used by his supporters or social Darwinists to justify the unethical political, social, and economic views that contributed to racism, imperialism, social inequality, and eugenics. Now, before we move on, I do want to, you know, define those words for you all so you all get a clear idea of what exactly we're talking about here. Now, racism, racism is prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people on the bias of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group, typically one that is minority or marginalized. And then we also have the belief that different races possess distinct characteristics, abilities, or qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as inferior or are superior to one another. Now, imperialism, imperialism is a policy of extending a, a country's power and influence, I'm sorry, influence through diplomacy or military force. Now, the historical definition is pretty much ruled by an emperor. Now, social inequality. Now, according to the Department of Psychology at Penn State, Social inequality, it refers to the differential access to and use of resources across various domains, such as health, education, occupations, that result in disparities across gender, race, slash ethnicity, class, and other important social markers. And then we also have eugenics. Now, eugenics is the study of how to arrange reproduction within a human population to increase the occurrence of heritable characteristics regarded as desirable. Now, developed largely by Sir Francis Galton as a method of improving the human race, eugenics was increasingly discredited as unscientifically as unscientific and racially biased during the 20th century especially after the adoption of its doctrines by the Nazis in order to justify their treatment of Jews, disabled people, and other minority groups. Now, I did just want to, you know, give you all a brief def definition of those words so you will understand what we're talking about. 
And Darwin's theory was used to justify this. Now, earlier, before I mentioned social Darwinism, I did mention the term scientific racism. Now, scientific racism, it's been around since the beginning of U.S. history. Heck, it's been around so long, it's said to be the reason the African slave trade occurred. I mean, scientists, they argued that African-American men were the perfect specimen to be slaves because they were uniquely fit. They had great physical strength and they had simple minds. And they further argued that the slaves did not experience pain as white people. And this was because they possessed primitive nervous systems. Now, things had gotten so bad when it comes to the black people and the medical and scientific community. In the South, they argued that slaves suffer from mental illness at rates lower than free northerners. So slavery was good for the slaves' mental health. They even went further to say that if a slave's, you know, if a slave escaped, they were suffering from their own mental illness, which they call draptomania. Or the disease causing Negroes to run away. Crazy, right? Well, it gets even crazier. Now, around the Civil War and a little after, doctors began stating that African Americans are a whole different species from white people. And they should be returned to Africa because they wouldn't be able to survive the colder climates of America. Now, remember, these are the doctors saying all this. And they went even further to say biracial children were prone to have medical issues and African-Americans brains are underdeveloped, but their genitals are overdeveloped. It even became widely believed that African-Americans were immoral creatures with insatiable sexual appetites and black men have a natural perversion for white women. Now, I made sure to go into all that because I want you all to understand the mindset of the doctors and the scientists at this time when it came to the black people. And I want you all to keep that in mind as we move through the story. And now that we have our backstory, let's get into what we're here for. The Tuskegee Experiment. Now, the Tuskegee Experiment, it was officially named... Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male. Now, the study was conducted by the United States Public Health Service or the USPHS, and it was conducted from 1932 to 1972 in Macon County, Alabama. Now, when the study began in 1932, medical science, they pretty much already knew all about the germ that causes syphilis and they knew about the complications that the complications that can result if it was left untreated. So the study, in my opinion, was pretty much unnecessary to begin with. But let's keep on moving. Now, the experiment or the study, it was conducted in Macon County because it was believed that approximately 35 percent of the population suffered from syphilis. Now, the U.S. Public Health Service, they claim that black people, regardless of their background, personal or economic situations or education, they said that black people, they couldn't be convinced to get treatment for syphilis. So instead, the African-Americans of, you know, instead of informing the African-Americans of their health status and giving them the benefit of the doubt, thinking, OK, they're going to do right by the health and all that good stuff. They took the inhumane and deceitful route. Now, they pretty much tricked them into participating in the experiment or the study, and they ensured that they did not receive treatment. Now, the African-American men, they were told that they would be receiving free medical care for bad blood. Now, Bad blood was a local term that was used to describe a range of conditions. And those conditions range from fatigue, anemia, syphilis, and so much more. So they kind of told them without actually telling them, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, I mean, the men, they knew they had something, but they didn't know exactly what because of this term that the doctors used. So the researchers, they 
went ahead and sold the men a dream. They told them that they would receive top-notch medical care and survivor's insurance. And they even sweetened the pot even more by providing the men with rides to and from the clinics, medical exams, free treatment for minor, ail- for minor ailments, meals on exam days, and they even promised the men burial stipends shall they succumb to their illness. I mean, the men, they were given an offer that they simply couldn't refuse. Now, in 1932, when the study began, there were no proven treatments for syphilis, but they were trying out several medications at this time in an attempt to treat the condition. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, the subjects, their ages range from 25 to 60, and they were told the study would last only around about six months. But we all know that was a lie. Now, even though the researchers sweetened the deal so much to get the men to participate, the black community was not as slow as they thought. Now, many of the black people, they began suspecting something was wrong, and they feared that the physical examinations, they were actually for the purpose of recruiting them into the military. Now, they knew something was up. They didn't know what was up, but they knew something wasn't right. So to calm the black community's suspicions, the doctors, they played it off by examining women and children as well. And many of the men, once they did these examinations, if they were diagnosed with syphilis, they were entered into the experiment unbeknownst to them. So they had no clue. Now, the men, they received x-rays, physical exams, spinal taps, and autopsies. If they didn't make it and succumb to their illness. Now, around the time the experiment started, syphilis, it was treated with medications that commonly contain mercury or arsenic. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I probably would have been scared to take that if I were them, but it is what was used to treat the condition at that time. Now, it wasn't really a proven treatment, but it is something that was used. Now, by 1933... The researchers, they decided they would continue the experiment long term. Now, a total of 600 men were recruited into the experiment. 399 of the men within that experimental group, they had the condition or the illness. And the other 201 men, they were within the control group and they did not have the illness. Um, So they were the control group. However... If any of the men in the control group contracted the infection, they would definitely be moved over to the experimental group. And I do apologize, you all. You might hear a dog here and there, and I did kind of drop a clipboard. I'm sorry about that. But we ain't perfect over here. Now, as I said earlier, medication, you know, containing mercury or arsenic was used as a form of treatment for the infection during this time. Now, the men in the experiment, they were given ineffective small doses of neoarspinamine or mercury. And this was given to the men to fool them into believing that they were being treated properly for bad blood, according to the reports. Remember earlier, they told the men that they had bad blood, but they never quite told them exactly what they had. Now, before we go any further, you know, with discussing the experiment or the study, I do want to inform you all of what medical reports state are the effects of untreated syphilis. I mean, I just want to give you all some insight on what these men were actually going through at this time because they were untreated. Now, according to the reports, the organism that causes the disease, it's related to one that causes Lyme disease. So both of these bacteria, they pretty much manifest themselves in stages. Now, trigger warning, I'm going to show images that aren't for the weak or sensitive. So look away or fast forward a bit. You know, I'll give you all a second to, you know, step out or whatever you need to do because, you know, I mean, I'll just fast forward or something. Now, the first stage of sexually acquired syphilis is often an ulcer or ulcers. And as you can see from the picture, they aren't a pretty sight and looks pretty painful to me. I mean, you all... Looking at what I'm looking at. Now, the second stage is a full body rash. And this also includes the palms of the hands 
and the soles of the feet. Now, I don't know about y'all, but looking at this picture just make my oof. Now, I'm almost positive that this is excruciatingly painful and grabbing something or walking maybe dang near impossible. I mean, just look at this picture to me. That's how I feel. And it looks pretty itchy to me, too. I mean, I don't know. But the third stage, it is characterized by gummas. Are syphilitic tumors, which are combined with bacteria that eats away at bone, and they frequently like to eat away at the nasal bridge. Now, the tumors, they also eat away at other organs as well, and they show a special liking to the arch of the aorta, which often leads to hemorrhage, or internal bleeding, rather. Now, during this late stage of the illness, neurosyphilis, which is an attack on the nervous system, it... You know, it presents itself with paresis, gait disturbance, blindness, and dementia. Now, now that you know the horrors these men were experiencing during this experiment, keep that in mind as you listen to the rest of today's chat. Now, as the experiment progressed and over time, the patients, they actually stopped attending their appointments. And in order to persuade the men to remain as a part of the experiment, the USPHS, they hired a nurse named Eunice Rivers to drive them to and from their appointments. And Eunice, she also provided hot meals to the men and she delivered their medications. Now, the researchers, they did all they could and some to ensure the men did not receive proper treatments. I mean, they made sure they didn't get any treatments that were offered at this time. Now, in 1934... The researchers, they gave the doctors in Macon County a list of their test subjects, and they asked them not to treat them. And in 1940, the researchers, they took their list on down to the health department in Alabama, and they asked them not to treat the men as well. Now, in 1941, many of the men finally found out about their illness during their entrance exam when they were drafted for war. Yes, they found out during the draft period. You know, this is around World War II. Now, after the men found out, the researchers, they had them removed from the Army just to keep them from being treated. Now, wow, I mean, come on. You have to have major power and pull to take men from the army that have been drafted for a world war. And, you know, pretty much this is the reason why many people believe the men did not contract the illness naturally. And instead, they were purposely infected for the purposes of this study or this experiment, rather. That's what a lot of people know it as, you know. So that's where this pretty much comes from, because... I mean, removing the men from the army further proves the researchers' motives as well. I mean, according to the reports, the researchers, they clearly never intended to document the natural progression of syphilis because they pretty much interfered with the process to ensure the men did not receive treatment from day one. I mean, remember in the beginning, they said that black people could not be convinced to get treatment. I mean, regardless of their education, their background or their economic or personal uh, personal situations. So this is why they pretty much started the experiment to simply just observe, you know, how the illness would affect them untreated. I mean, untreated because by their logic, the black people would never get treatment. Right now, they said all of that. But they intervened every time to ensure the black men did not receive treatment. I mean, regardless if they wanted to or not. I mean, first, they hid the fact that the men had the illness by saying that they had bad blood, which could have been a range of things. I mean, second, they lied to the men and told them they were being treated with what was considered treatment at that time, but they were not. I mean, y'all remember the weekend stuff that they was giving them and the ointments and all of that. And lastly, and worstly, they prevented the men from seeking treatment. I mean, they did all they could. I mean, they pulled the men from the army after they were drafted for a real war, for Christ's sakes. And I mean, I'm confused. Why do so much and go through such great lengths to prevent people from receiving treatment if they can't be convinced to receive treatment from the beginning, according to you all? Isn't that why you all did the study? Because you said they wouldn't receive treatment? 
I mean, make it make sense. I mean, I really don't get it, but moving on along. Wait, no, no, no. One more thing before we move on along. Now, also, weren't they giving the men, like we said, the weakened forms of the medication and the ointments, like I said a few seconds ago? And they were doing this to actually fool them into believing that they were treated. Now, I wanted to elaborate on that a little bit for you all because, it, you know, now, why are you giving them fake treatment to fool them that they're being treated if you said they would never come, could be convinced to be treated? I mean, at the same time, you're saying this, but you're pretending to treat them. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, but let's keep on going. We're not going to dwell on that. We're going to keep on talking. We ain't going to tear it too long. Now, in 1943, the Henderson Act was passed. Now, the Henderson Act, it required that tests and treatment be provided for those with venereal diseases through public funding. However, the men in the experimental group, they still did not receive treatment. And in 1947, penicillin became the standard treatment for syphilis. Now, with the Henderson Act being passed and penicillin being proven to be an effective treatment for the condition, the USPHS, they had to take action. I mean, they had to take action. So they opened up several rapid treatment centers and those treatment centers were to treat the condition with penicillin. But guess what, everybody? They still managed to ensure the men in the experimental group did not receive treatment. Now, I'm thinking the same thing you all probably are like, I mean, how I really don't get it. We probably have the same questions. I mean, but let's keep on going. Now, miraculously, by 1952, about 30% of the men in the experimental group, they received penicillin despite how hard the researchers fought to present them from receiving it. Now, I thought the researchers said that the black people couldn't be convinced to receive treatment. I mean, I'm make it make sense. But I think truth is the men were being lied to and they pretty much thought they were already being treated. So why would they seek further treatment if they think that they're already being treated? And they didn't even know what they were being treated for. They just said bad blood. So it could have been anything. Now, with all the things going on, the Henderson Act and penicillin being proven as an effective treatment, one would think the researchers would just give up and do right by the men, right? Nope, they didn't. And in 1965, the researchers, they began to argue that it was too late to give penicillin to their subjects because the illness had progressed too far for the drug to be effective. Now, of course, we all know that's not true because, of course, we know penicillin has been proven to be an effective treatment for the condition at all stages. And the researchers, they knew this as well. Um, according to the reports, but we know what the motive was. Now, in 1947, the Nuremberg Code was written, and in 1964, the World Health Organization published their Declaration of Helsinki. Now, you probably are wondering, what the heck are those? I mean, basically, they both were set in place to protect humans from experimentation. But they still didn't protect the men within the Tuskegee Experiment. And in 1969, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, they decided to actively continue the experiment. The CDC had taken over the study from the USPHS. And it took a whistleblower to blow the top off the entire operation. Now, for those of you who don't know, a whistleblower is a person who informs or tells on a person or an organization that is engaged in an illicit activity. You know, a lot of people call him a snitch, but I say, hey, some got to do what you got to do. Now, information about the experiment was leaked to the New York Times. And once the Times got information about the experiment, the paper published the information on the front page of the newspaper on November the 16th, 1972. And when the information got out, the study finally ended. Forty long years later, it was finally over. Now, by the time the Tuskegee experiment ended, only 74 of the 399 test subjects were still alive. 
128 patients passed away due to the illness and its complications. 40 of the men's wives contracted the illness and 19 children of the men acquired congenital syphilis, according to the reports. And no one was ever charged criminally or prosecuted for the heinous crimes they committed against these men and their families. Now, there was a class action lawsuit filed and the men and their families, they received around about $10 million, but you never split it up, pay lawyers and all the fees and all of that stuff. But thankfully, due to the Tuskegee experiment, Congress passed the National Research Act in 1974, which established the Office for Human Research Protections within the U.S. PHS. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is why now informed consent must be obtained from all study participants. And the process is overseen by the Institutional Review Boards, or the IRBs. Well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. I mean, tell me what you all think. What are your thoughts about the doctors and the scientists' views about African Americans all together? I mean, do you think that they still feel this way? Because... I mean, the medical community and scientific community, in my opinion, and don't come for me, hasn't changed much from then to now. And that's just my opinion. Now, do you all feel that the men contracted the illness naturally? Or do you think that they were given the illness on purpose for the, you know, for this study altogether? And also, why do you think the experiment took place for so long? I mean, it lasted 40 years. So tell me what you all think. Put your drops in the comment. I'm sorry, put your thoughts in the comments below. Drop them on down there for me. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, if you would like to support the channel, the information to support will be in the description of the video below. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.